Well, hello there. Hi there, friends. And welcome to Needles at the Ready. I'm Kevin. And I'm Ray. This is our YouTube channel where we talk about knitting, crocheting, yarn dyeing, yarn buying, and all the things that come with it. So That's welcome right. back to all the returning viewers and welcome to any new viewers. Um, this is going to be chatty, so just buckle up, Buttercup, because we had a busy two weeks. We sure did. It was so good. It was. It yeah. was a really good two it was weeks. So, good. so we might be all over the place, but... Oh. What? This is episode 93. Right. And today is Saturday, August 19th, 2023. Right. So and check are... that box off your calendar. We should do a Needles at the Ready like bingo. Not like a uh, live bingo, but we should create bingo cards for people. And so when we say things, they can check things off. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Sure, go ahead. Create it. No, I don't I, I don't have the brain space for that. Um. So let's see. What was I going to say? I don't know, but it's lovely to sit down. We were just saying that it, felt, it feels like we've haven't done this in a really long time, even though it's only been two weeks. I know. I just think it's because it's been a busy two weeks yeah. that it feels like we haven't expressed the amount of stuff that we've done. <laughs> we haven't had an outlet to <laughs> trickle that a little bit out at a time. True. So now so, let, the, let the waterfalls gush. Hope you guys had a great two weeks. Um... I don't know. What else? Well, let's jump into some administrative things right off the bat. Oh, okay. Um, if let's you are joining our Let's Hear It for the Boys um, make along, that wraps up. Oh, at the end of September, we extended it a month. We did. So we still have well over a month to um, get those projects going. We have a Ravelry group and we have a hashtag on Instagram. The hashtag is NATR Boys 2023. I can't believe we're in 2023. I know. I can't believe it's like end of August. August. Tell me about it. No, it's like end of, almost end of August. 19th. Okay. You're like right. mid-August. Mid um, we do have still in the shop some Let's Hear It for the Boys merch. We have our pack-ups, which is... Oh, I actually have it here. Which is um, a really cool tote with our Let's Hear It for the Boys logo. And there's a pin that comes along with that. And a sticker. I yeah. don't have the vinyl sticker with me. It's actually downstairs. Yeah, it's a vinyl sticker. It's that's very large. It's like two, two, three by three? No, it's three by three. The pin's wow. one and a half by one and a half, and the bag is ridiculously huge. It's, yeah, it's um, large. A cotton canvas tote, and the image is on both sides, yeah. and I think we, you could probably put a good, like, definitely a sweater oh, quantity of yarn in there, if not more. Yeah. So I had a shawl, a sock project, and a hat project in mine. All in separate bags, right? All in their own bags. Right. In, in that, that tote bag. Yeah. So it's a really good size bag. Absolutely. And that, you can find that on needlesattheready.com. Yes. What? That's actually a really good thing. So for those of you who don't know, um, the shop was on Etsy. Yeah. We've moved it to our own website, which is needlesattheready.com. I think we did that in Dot June. Com. No. I think I did that in July. July. Yeah. So um, we are no longer on Etsy. The shop still there it's on vacation mode but all product is at needles at the ready .com. Mm -hmm. that's super and exciting the link is down below as will the link for anything that we talk about yarns patterns um other makers and things like that will always be down below hit more and more i think <laughs> something like that to get the all the show notes correct good job Thanks, All right, Ted. so rest of the administration um, so yeah. we did let's hear it for the boys we have our hohi and mayak um, summer cow that we're still um, participating in. We might I have, have some things to show about it. So that is over in the Mayak Ravelry group. We uh, have that link down below as well if you want to participate there. It's very chill. Just knit any Hohi Locatelli pattern. Um, we talked about this before. There are really, she's got a Rafa hat pattern, which is super awesome. It's one of our um, favorite hats. And then it's a simple, quick, it'll be a quick project. Yeah. Um, she's got sweaters and shawls, lots of, lots of really good things. And if I'm not mistaken, let me just double check. She also has her, um, like fall cow, oh, yeah. cow starting and she has a coupon, I believe. Ready for fall. So it's her ready for fall two is out. That's a pattern, okay. but she has, I, I know... Let me see. There's I something that said 25% off. Yeah, where's that? Okay, so here we go. So it's time for her annual discount starting today, whatever day that was. August 15th. Through, and all through August 30th, you can get... Yep, it says it right here. Oh, I'm sorry. It started <laughs> August 15th. 
and it goes to August 30th, you could get 25% off any of her individual self-published patterns. That's fantastic. Yeah, so um, definitely check that out because then you can double dip, kind of, because her starts, um, you can sign up until August 30th on her Ravelry group and there's always a ton of prizes. And I believe um, you have to sign up for like what you're gonna make. Are you gonna make a sweater, a hat, a shawl or yeah. socks, something like that. So you kind of have to specify what type of project you're gonna complete. And yeah, so definitely check that out and take and advantage the, the of that coupon, coupon code, code is Hohe Hohe Fall Cal 2023. We'll just throw yeah. that up there for you guys. And check out her Instagram post for for that if it's not held up long enough. We probably yeah. won't have that link down in our show notes, so if your if your ears were great, you so took we, notes. So we have that. And again, yeah. that ends at the end of September as well and we will be at Brooklyn General for the finale finale dun, 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 dun. we had a really nice um zoom chat with a bunch of you last two weeks ago yeah right, right after, after we... our last podcast we talked a lot about what everybody was working on um Paula over at Mayak Yarn hosted along with us we talked a lot about your like dying and yeah. some um some motivations that Kevin had to choose colors and all of those things. We may have created a um, opportunity for um, something special coming down the line. We're not sure. And yeah, it was really fun. So um, hopefully you'll join us in Brooklyn. We're really excited to go down there. We're um, looking for some hotels at the moment. Yeah. Right? We didn't commit to one. No, we haven't. No. Picked it's one. a little pricey down there. It is, sure yeah, is. It sure is. Um, and then I think that's all of our... Admin stuff? Administrative things. Um, there are two, a couple coupon codes that we want to mention, actually. Yes. So we have a bunch down below. Uh, some off the top of my head again are, nitty, are Naughty Knitting Sacks, Katie, um, Trilogy Yarns, which is Nancy, Knit Swag. Oh, man, I meant to bring it up. I think we have and, Scrappy Angel. Scrappy Angel, yes. Which, which we have something to show from Scrappy Angel. And I wanted to bring my bits and bobs because we saw one out in the wild. Um, yeah, it was so good. I, I have mine. Oh, okay. And uh, That's a lie. I know, mine's downstairs. Um, Wait, no, it's not a lie. Always Queenie I believe, believe. I think it's in here. Which, Honestly, um, we've I, shown her bags. Uh, yeah, we've shown all here. stuff from all of them. There is so much stuff in this tote. There and are? I, it doesn't, there are. There is, <laughs> there's a lot in here. Even though it doesn't look like super huge from a distance, but... There's, there's a lot in here. Okay, so anyways, this is the bits and bobs that Kevin was talking about. And we did see it out in the wild. I know, we saw a Groot one, which I really yeah, loved. It's, it's absolutely one of my favorite, um, like, notions, pack-ups. It's such a clever design. And this is by Always Queenie Believe, which we do have a coupon code for. I've shown this quite a lot. This, has been, this is probably over a year old. Um, it's got a magnetic clasp, zippers on both sides. Sorry, you can hear all the, the jingling. And on the inside, um, there are scissors, darning needles, safety pins. There's a um, tape measure, all these really fun things. This is not included. This was a gift from our friend Lucy that I'm keeping in here because I use it often. Um, highlighters, all of those really cool things. And it's, it's so fun to just throw this in your bag. You're good to go. You've got everything that you need. And for me, in case you're curious, I have some extra cords for my uh, Chowgu interchangeable needles. And then I have some um, barber cord in here as well. And then on the other side, I have some stitch markers. And um, this is super cute. This is from- Twice Shared Sheep. Twice Shared Sheep. I love their little collections. So in this little, Thing, I have all of my twice sheared sheep stuff so I can keep track of my increase rows did you know knit rows increase rows I've got decreases I've got counts in here um, you can put whatever really whatever you want but we did see one out in the wild yes so definitely check her out she currently has two versions on her Etsy shop um, these are the two that she currently has but she's always updating so keep yeah. an eye out uh, they really are fantastic. Mm -hmm. But so we do have. Which one did we see out in the wild? Was it a Harry Potter one? No, it was Groot. Oh yeah, Groot. You just said you said that. I did. I'll start That's paying okay. attention. No, it's all right. I'm yeah. used. To, it's 22 years. I'm not surprised. It's okay. It goes both ways. 
Um, What's my middle name? <laughs> I have no idea. I'm just kidding. No. Yes, he does. It took him a while to re- to, re- to uh, remember what my middle name was. So, um, coupon codes that we wanted to mention outside of the ones that we just did. And again, there's a, a list in the show notes. But And thank you to all of the makers who have shared those coupon codes. It really means a lot to us. And oh, we're really sure. happy to share that. And we love hearing from them when you guys do use them. Yeah, you know, it's really we, cool. They reach out to us and let us know. So it's really fun to hear about that. But specifically for, we have one for the Let's Hear It for the Boys yes. Make Along, and that's from well, the... So you guys, just going to interject for a moment. You may hear some weird noises in the background. Um, I don't we'll, know that the mic will pick it up. No, but if it does, um, we got a bird. And we can talk about it more, but that's what the noise is in the background. If you hear some whistling and some... Um, some weird screeching noises. That's what's happening downstairs right and now. And the word we is used loosely in that statement. Well, I think it was false pretenses because I really thought that you... Um, but, here all right. Here. Okay, but first... Um, but first, for leading men, sorry. Um, they shared this coupon code with us and we've been sharing it throughout the knit along because it was created specifically for our make along and it goes until the end uh, of the make along. So September 30th. 30 days past September. Um, for 15% off, um, use NATR Boys at Leading Men um, Fiber Arts. And they also have free domestic shipping on orders of $20 or more. They offer um, skein winding services. And um, they have a loyalty program that allows also 10% cash back on future orders, which is really cool. And they, um, they have a brick and mortar store. Their website is fantastic. We've said this before, they've got so many colors and you can see each one of those colors knit up in a swatch so you can see how it's going to play um, before you even purchase them, which is really fantastic. So, um, And another one of the newer ones that we received is the shop, The Modern Skein. Oh, yeah. Very kindly um, gave us a coupon code for 10% off You've your order. Get down there. And that is NATR Boys. So definitely check them out. Like we said, they... Um, carried the red side fiber which we showed last time and we love that yes. his colorway so check that out and then we have one more new one 1101 and that is this one is good until 1159 october 31st dublin time Ooh. so this is really good if you guys are like a uk viewer mm-hmm. or somewhere over there um europe so this is from Myra, and the coupon code is 15% off all of her yarns, and it is Myra, I'm going to go Isan, I-S-A-N, Studio, which we'll, we'll link we'll below. We'll have this all linked down below. Um, but, and she just released a new pattern, it's called the Noble Scarf, which mm-hmm. is on there as well, so definitely check that out. But she has some beautiful the colorways. Colors I was looking through yeah. her shop uh, once she reached out to us. Yeah. So thank you, Myra, for it's the coupon nice code. It's always nice to like find new, you know, new to us people. Yes. But it's free worldwide shipping on order shipping on orders over three hundred dollars. Well, that's not U.S. dollars. I think that's is it pounds. Well, I don't know. So yes, definitely check all of those makers out and all the ones that we have listed below. And now I think that's it for the admin stuff. So we're going to just catch up on our last two weeks. Super cool. She had courses and stuff. Check out that website. So we said that we did the Mayak Zoom and then you were off that week. Yeah, because we were dog sitting for my brother. Well, you Um, needed to take time off anyways. I definitely needed to. Because of school, work, and your assistant manager's going on paternity leave. So you took a week off prior to him going. Yes, I needed a mental health week. And then we, that Monday, um, a bird joined the household. And said bird's name is Skylar, because we're still unsure of whether it's a male or female. We think it's a male. It's a parakeet. Um, Or a budgie. budgie. We call it, it's, you know, um, I will show you a picture of him. I was hoping that he would be um, trained enough at this point to sit on our shoulder while we we're podcasting, but well, that will come one day. It's been two. It's, it hasn't even been a full Correct. Two I know, but, you know, he is... Tell me he's not cute. I haven't posted this on socials yet, so this is a, a first-time view. Um, um, this is share. him in his cage. He, he 
This is him out of his cage when he flew the hell out right past me when I was trying to give him a millet. So we're trying to, I'm trying to, you know, tame him and so he can learn to step up on my finger and get comfortable coming out of the cage. Training a, um, a you know, it takes a lot of patience. I'm, I'm starting to like struggle with that because I want things done like yesterday, but mm. we're taking our time mm. and we don't want him out of the cage until he learns how to step up on our finger because that'll be easier if he gets out to you rescue him he'll know that he can it's a safe spot to jump up on our finger and he can get back into the cage so yeah kevin opened the cage the bird the bird has a lot of energy and loves to fly and flap around and scream and yell and play it's very cute to watch so he flew out of the cage i get yeah. a text message <laughs> i'm like how the hell the bird is out do i get the this bird back in the cage so Ray had to leave work early and come and rescue the bird, who flapped around the entire downstairs and made his, his wings way. are clipped, they which are clipped. is safer for the birds while you're training them. Um, eventually, I want you know when his wings grow back, I'm not going to have them clipped again, so he'll have um, he'll be able to fly around the house. Yeah, he crawled up the um, screen door. Yeah, that's fun. Good, great times. Yeah, um, so but I got him in my hands. Um, you know, he hung out there and I put him back into the cage. Everything was great. He's a little frustrated with me, though, because I'm the... Oh, he's ringing his bell. Did you hear that? No. He Thank has 55,000 toys in the his cage. His cage... No, he has four can, toys in his cage. Can create a Great Dane. They need room to, to explore <laughs> and to fly once he can fly. He's learning, though. He's climbing his cage. He's getting a lot of exercise. He is. He doesn't really seem interested in, in a whole lot of his toys, but I just heard the bell ring, so that's really, that's promising stuff. We're trying to find his favorite treats. Um, they are not real human food right now. He does not like fruits, like no, strawberries been, or blueberries. Yeah, we've given him blueberries and strawberries and baby carrot. I think he, I feel like he took a nibble of the baby carrot. He did. Yeah, he took a nibble of the baby carrot and then, um, you know, millet, which is like, potato chips to um to birds oh, I would so we love took some, some of that potato chips i know so okay yes, anyway so that we is... have a bird so you'll probably be hearing and seeing more of skylar um he's super cute right now it's a little awkward where his cage is because i we have him in the living room um just so that he can get used to us and then he'll go into uh his um forever spot, forever spot. <laughs> wherever that may be um so what else? So during your week off, we also had lunch. We had Kim and Kate uh, uh, from the Knitting Posse. So two of the three ladies of the Knitting Posse yep. come over here for lunch because we did. We were um, babysitting or dog watch, not babysitting, dog watching Max again. Why um, your brother or your brother and our sister in law were on vacay? So they came over and I cooked some bruschetta pasta. It we was had some really garlic delicious. bread. Um, Kate brought over dessert. We also had some um, cookies. We showed them the this room, the podcasting room. And then we actually looked at a lot of my yarn. And it was really inspiring because, like, we were looking at different color combinations for things. And Kate took three skeins. And she's going to knit up a shawl with it that they showed on their most recent episode that you should definitely go check out. Yeah. So that's um, on YouTube. They are the Knitting Posse. And Laura we, joined them. Yeah, Laura's back. She from, wasn't here with us for lunch. But next time she will. Yeah, she's back from Scotland. Yeah. Um, so this was Posse at the Ready. They took they were a hanging out right where, where we were. And they're just um, they're fantastic. Lovely. We we talk, you know, we talked about it how this craft brings people together and how it's really interesting as you spend more time with each other. And this could be really for any knitting group, how it starts off, you know, talking about knitting. Yeah. And then it progresses to where you're sharing more of yourselves and your lives and your past and you know you become friends and family and just love them to pieces we have always have a great time with them and always look forward to uh seeing them and really excited because we will be staying with them when we go to um Rhinebeck and Woolen Folk you know the whole New York Sheep and Wool weekend yeah. so that was one more thing and then that weekend so last weekend was a whirlwind Oof. So, Friday, 
we headed to Rhode Island and on our way to Rhode Island, we stopped here locally at some shopping outlets because we very rarely go like clothes shopping. Yeah. So we decided since we were on our way, we stopped there, picked up a couple things, and then we stopped at the Nitty Gritty Girl Yarn Nitty Gritty Yarn Girl Shop in East Lime. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm gonna double check. I have it pulled up because we were wrong last time. Um Nitty Gritty Yarn Girl. East Lime, Connecticut. Woohoo! Score. Good job. Score. Or actually, Niantic. It's not. Yeah. Niantic. East Lime is like a little, like. So we have sub-town. our nitty gritty yeah, look how fun. yarn girl mugs. That. Um, it's a lovely shop. It was um, their one year anniversary yes. of turning into a brick and mortar shop. They started originally was going to be uh, before COVID. They were going to. Um, Connecticut, not Connecticut Sheep and Wool. What's that one? Called? It was going to be um, Stitches. Yeah, it was Stitches United. Stitches United was going to be the March of 2020. Yep. And obviously got canceled. COVID. We all know that story and how that went. And um, so yeah, she was going to be a vendor there, and it got canceled. She had all this yarn, and so they started selling yarn um, online. And it was, um, you know, she was telling us the story of how it started in their basement. Like they were doing like little, you know, Facebook lives and different things to talk about their yarn and, um, you know, started getting more and more of a following and she had all this yarn and they decided, you know, they were so successful at that. They decided to open up a very cute shop. Yeah. It's, um, it was very welcoming. She's got a big TV with a couch area and like some chairs to sit around and socialize and knit. Um, she carries a lot of really cool yarns, which we'll show. Yeah. Um, we were also very lucky. Um, where did I put it here? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So during, um, you know, she had events all, all weekend. It was like a weekend celebration. Yeah. She did. I think it was four days of events. It, yeah. Three or four. I, I don't remember if it was Thursday, but it was definitely Friday, Saturday, Sunday. She had things going on and people from the industry there. Yeah. So, so, um, Roseanne was there. Um, I'm, I, I'm going to butcher your last name. I'm not going to, I know. Flesher. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I mean, it does, but maybe great job. Um, Maybe. she was so lovely she and was. she, um, came out with a book of patterns called cozy coastal knits. Do you know <laughs> what? what it reminds? So when I hear the word coastal, does it go to a specific, um, like cozy coastal? Does that go to a specific person for you? I don't know if you hear it as often as I do. The person say it. It doesn't. Do you want to tell me first? Then? No, from, um. Crap. I'm trying to think of her name, but Ministry Nerds, where she does like Coastal Grandma. Oh, yeah. Her, right? Like, so when <laughs> you say, I immediately like the That's co- cozy, fun. I go right to um, her. Katie and Michelle. Michelle. Yes, Michelle is Coastal Grandma vibes. Wow. Okay. All right. So I'm sorry. Anyway, anyway. no, it's cute. So um, Roseanne's a knitwear designer. She focuses on engaging to knit versatile styles that can go from grocery store to boardroom and beyond. So, um, there's a couple of her, um, her designs there. I love the colors. It is totally, um, gives that coastal vibe. There's a ton of shawls in here. And ponchos. Po- yeah. Like, oh, look how fun that is. That's so cute. So she was lovely. We met her. She signed our book for us. There's she a, did. We signed her book too. Scarf. Yeah, and we signed her book. She Which had like a little fun. yearbook or whatever. And I loved, she had a real camera. Like she wasn't using a smartphone. I missed going, and I was talking to her about that, how I missed going out with my real camera. Mm-hmm. Um, years ago, I we used to go out with like actual digital cameras and go out to abandoned yeah. places with our friends, take pictures and all that stuff. And I think I might um, try to turn some of those pictures into colorways. Like go back through some of my really old photos and turn them into colorways. I think that'd be cool. So um, what's cool about this book too is it's not just patterns. These are all the patterns here, but in this front section, which is a good section, 
there's techniques with pictures. Um, there's information about yarns and weights on yarns and how to get that perfect drape if that's what you're going for, how to put colors um, together, selecting all that yarn, um, putting together your uh, your notions. Um, like a notion scope. Yeah, like to have a nail file. Absolutely. Know, like I, we have that too, but that's not what we, we didn't know that you absolutely need in one. the beginning, you know, of our journeys, but having a nail file in there is like, there's like really, yes. Like, of course there's nothing, nothing worse than when you get like a, a snag on your nail uh -huh. and it keeps catching your yarn. Nail file is highly, absolutely important and it is yeah throw that in your in your bag and you'll be good to go so we'll have this book linked down below please check her out um she's um yeah she was she was very very lovely it was so nice to meet her so we left there and then we drove to rhode island oh. who are you talking to nobody they're talking to me um and so as you guys know if you were here last time we were we went to skin yarn shop in Rhode Island. So Friday night we it's drove It's been a up. year in the making. It has been. But, like, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to express, like, how amazing Friday night and all day right. Saturday was. So, I mean, we did warn you this is going to be a chatty episode. I know. So we're I'm going to tell one of my stories. Okay. I think I know where this one's going, but let's see. You do? I Probably know. not, because I'm just going to set it up what we're doing. Oh, Jesus. Here we go. So we <laughs> drove, um, it was about an hour and a half, or an hour, hour and 15 minutes from our house to Nitty Gritty Yarn Girl. And then from there, it was about another hour-ish um, yeah. to get to the hotel. So we booked a hotel kind of last minute, because that's our jam, um, what we do. We get to the hotel, we had a little bit of time because um, they invited us out to dinner, which was really sweet. So we were gonna meet a few of them out for dinner. Um, and we, yeah, I don't know why I'm setting up, there was not really a big, huge story to tell. So we, we, went, I, we, we went to- um, You know why? Because you're dramatic. That's your that's your theater days coming out. I think me and the bird get, get along very well. He's pretty dramatic too. Anyway, we drove, <laughs> It was very cute. We stayed by like an airport or whatever. Um, you yeah. He's going I crazy. Um, the hotel was not the best. No. Mm -mm. Although the bed was comfortable. Yeah, the room itself was nice. The Everything needed to be updated. I actually went down. Kevin caused the scene. I did not. I went down right, I think, as we were going to dinner and walked to the front desk. I was like, hey, just so you know. The, one of the night tables, like they were hanging ones. I was like, it's hanging off the wall. Drawer doesn't stay shut. We didn't do it. She's like, you want a new room? I was like, nope, just want you to know we didn't do it so that you don't charge us for anything. So yeah, so we went to um, dinner. We went to the Greenwich Bay Oyster Bar, which is Lori, who is the owner of Skane Shop. It's one of her favorite restaurants. So we had dinner with Lori, Justine, Gail, Laura, and Dawn. It was so nice. It, Justine and I and Gail, I think Gail had some. We had French martinis. Yes. Um, they were lovely. I haven't had a French martini in a very long time. Um, for those of you who don't know a French martini, it's vodka, chambord, and pineapple juice. And um, it was, the food was amazing. Amazing. I will say that it's probably one of my favorite meals. Yeah. Um, the service was incredible. I highly recommend, if you're in the area, check out this place. It's a smaller place, um, but they did such a great job. Um, we don't eat oysters, but there was a we lot. We don't eat seafood. Right. There was a lot of, um, they looked good. I mean, then everybody seemed to enjoy yeah. them. They, the presentation was, was nice. Well, let's also say you're allergic to shellfish. Correct. So uh, you can't eat shellfish. Right. Um, but it was, I just, so... I'm going to digress for a second. That day, prior to getting there to dinner, was actually quite a hard day. That was, it would have been Tarquin's 13th birthday. Yes. So it was, I just knew I was a cranky old man, pretty much, that day. But walking in mm -hmm. there, yeah. the my mood immediately changed because they were so welcoming. Mm -hmm. um, 
immediately changed. And the evening was lovely. We laughed. We talked. We it for it was two hours. Like, I... When it was time to go, I felt kind of bad because there were people waiting outside for, we had for the to table. Go. We actually <laughs> so like, we really did have to, to get go. the hell out of there. But um, um, it was yeah. like sitting with friends. Honestly, it really was. It immediate was, friends. Yeah, it was amazing. It was just yeah. amazing. It was really, really, it was good. such an amazing dinner. And mm. we had met Lori and Justine at Rhinebeck last year. We had met Gail and Laura at. Connecticut Sheep and Wool two years ago. Right, they wore the hats that you... They wore hats. And, and they had our pins. Our pins. really cute. They had both knit hats at a Dirty Ballerina, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure it was dirty. No, it was know. not. If you don't remember it correctly, no. Gail's going to have Gail's gonna be on you because... It wasn't. It was... She said our memories are terrible. No, it was not Dirty Ballerina. It was a very speckly yarn. I don't remember the name of it because I think I only did it that one time. Yes, it was not Dirty Ballerina. Okay. It was a speckly yarn. It had a bunch of colors in it. Um, so, yeah. So, then Saturday, we went to Skein Yarn Shop. And Skein Yarn Shop is in... Of course, I have... I know it's not the same town. Is it East... East Greenwich, Rhode Greenwich. Island. We got there at, like, at 10 When they opened. At 10 o'clock. We weren't sure, like, what we were going to do. So we were there from 10 to 4.30, I think, is we when closed, we finally got... We closed them down. So many of you I've all I've never out. spent so much time in a yarn shop before. No. First, let's just say, this yarn shop is the epitome of kind of what a yarn shop should be. What was, we... What, what we... Not what... Yes. What we like. Thank you. you know, not what it shop. should be. But it was so welcoming. You walk in and there's, like, a 16-foot wood table surrounded by chairs. And then surrounded by yarn. Surrounded so by like yarn. So, like, the focal point is that table, you know? Yeah. And it's like we've always talked about why we started the podcast, why we do what we do, like, why we love this, you know, this craft and, and all of that is the community, you know? Like, that's at the heart of it all. And that's what it felt like walking into this yarn shop. It was like the community was the heart of the yarn shop. And then the yarn was almost... You know, it's secondary. secondary. It's like beautiful. Yeah. And, um, you know, as you're sitting there, you can't help but look around. And you, you know, we met so many amazing people. Yeah. A ton of you came out to just like hang out. And um, some of the regular customers who had no idea like what was going on, you know, came and we met them. Um, and we got to see old friends. We got, yeah. You know, we got to see Olivia. And Robin. And Robin. Caleb. Oh, yeah. Um, and yep. Caleb, that and was so much fun. Who came, oh, my gosh. Why am I... I'm having a brain fart. Olivia, Robin, and... Susan? Thank you. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, what's really cool is, like, when we were out to dinner, um, we all love show, like, show and tell, right? And, like, that's how we, we learn and get inspired from each other. And we just happen to do, like, the digital version of that, like, with the right. podcast. And that's why we like it. But, in you know, in real life, like... We were at, we were out to dinner and, uh, Laura was sitting next to me and we were talking about mosaic crochet. She said that she was doing some mosaic crochet pattern. It's absolutely gorgeous. But then she was like, oh, I'll bring it tomorrow. And then we were talking about my, um, the, the blanket that I had, uh, just finished and two, I think Gail was working on it. I think Laura too were uh, and yeah. you know so I said oh I'll bring that you know because I brought it I brought that with me and it's it was just so nice to like share that you know when we got to the to Skein yarn shop and Laura did bring her mosaic crochet which is absolutely stunning um yeah and was, inspired me to try to learn that right so I don't know it was just the the feeling I, there was so incredible yeah I, Lori and um Justine were so welcoming it, they're I fantastic can't even like, Justine <laughs> Justine's the two of them, they're just great. Yeah. They're great. If you ever have the chance to go, I highly recommend going. They have they have a lot of like open knit days, like Tuesday, Thursday, or maybe Tuesday, Wednesday. I don't know. It's on their site, but mm -hmm. there's always people there knitting. It's just such a welcoming place. Like we will definitely go back. Oh, for sure. It would be dangerous if we lived closer 100%. because of the community that the store has. Yes. They would probably hate us. They would probably have to kick us out every <laughs> single day. Like we would be um, like, oh God, Kevin and Ray are here again. But yeah, definitely, um, we will definitely go back. And yeah. leaving was, so we left and I will just say like, there, were, and we'll talk about it in a little bit, but there were, um, oh my God, where is it? Hold on. 
Alma, Jen, and... Oh my gosh, I can't. Angie? Angie? Is it Angie? Maybe. The three of them um, gave us a little something at the end of the, the day, but, and we thanked them, and then they, I got really, I think we bolted, it got, kind of got emotional. I tried. It's I really weird tried. when, um, but it's cool at the same time. And it's one of the reasons we keep doing this, when people talk about how, watch it, like that, we don't realize what we do for the community or for people watching. And there was this conversation about it and it just got me all in the feels. So I just want to thank them also because they I, they were like three of the first people there. We sat across from them um, and chatted with them some and they were just lovely. It was... Um, it was such a... It was, it was just... Yeah. It felt so great. It really did feel so great. And it's only two hours away from us. We can, I know. You know, it's I've, not a far trip. Look, um, I thought, I was like, should it be like a once a month trip? I'm kind of leaning towards that as well. But, we couldn't stay overnight no, once but, a month. But what else? Maybe, you know, maybe Justine and Lori will. So, yeah. So, again, room. to everybody who came out, thank you. To Lori and Justine for putting that together. We can't thank you two enough. Um, and... We just had an amazing time. So I hope everybody else did as well. It was great to see like some of like projects with my yarn in person, the bits and bobs out in the wild, chip baskets out in the wild. Yeah. So it's just really Some people cool. had the let's hear it for the boys. Bags. Um, bags. It was just it, such a cool yeah. thing. Um, so I yeah, think we should lovely. get into some knitting. Yeah. Half an hour in. We did warn you. 40 minutes in. 36 minutes. Well, that's close to 40. We can All run. right, let's not rush things. Yeah, we had a bunch of other stuff go on, but we're going to get into some knitting. And so, we'll probably, fill, you know, add some things here or there. I have one FO and I have two whips. I have one FO, one ho that I'm pr probably going to bring that down to uh, lose its ho status. And I have three, maybe three whips. Good for you. Okay, so let's start with FOs. Go ahead, since you're wearing yours. Okay, so this was part of our um, Hohe's um, make-along with Mayak. I finished my Pure Joy. This was absolutely Wow, lovely. look how see-through it is. I know. It's the yarn. The yarn is so drapey. And yeah. um, this is such a fun pattern. It really, really is. And it just, it really does fly off the needles. I feel like, you know, I've been working on it. Uh, I started it a while ago, but I've been picking it up and putting it down. Like I didn't want it to end. And we kind of talked about that during the last Zoom that we chatted about. And um, then I was like, oh, well, we got to get down to, to Brooklyn. I wanted to have this finished. And then I should probably make some progress on some other things. So um, I'm using Myax, um Silk Yak Blend, which is, and I have quite a bit of yarn left over. So this is 50% Baby Yak and 50% Silk. These are the two colors that I use. You obviously can see it in my completed shawl. The grayish color is called Shonda. And this is how they come. They're 25 gram skeins. And this one is called... Dakini, D-A-K-I-N-I. -I. And it's absolutely stunning. This is this is huge. This yeah, is so much bigger than my previous one. Um, because the yarn, honestly, is is just it's so light and squishy. Um, and I like this pattern because even though it's tech it's more of like a scarf, like a really yes. pretty scarf than it is a shawl, although it does kind of swoop down. And I did not stretch this out to block it. I just laid it out to dry. Um, I didn't pin this out or anything like that. I probably, you could, if I wanted to, I probably could, you know, pin these out a little bit more if, you know, to, to stretch out the... You don't want to stretch out the garter though. No, but I could at least like stretch out some of the, if I wanted to, I don't want to. Yeah. But if you, if you wanted to, you could always stretch out the, um, I the highlights there. I'm not asking you, well, it doesn't matter. Shush, let me finish. Just kidding. So, um... I do have, you know, this is the second one that I've knit and I absolutely love it. it. Like right now, it's a 
very beautiful day here in Connecticut. We're at 70 degrees. And so I'm very comfortable wearing this. And I think it looks really fun. I love the colors. Yeah, the color choices are great. Yeah. It, it's a really great shawl. It's a very wearable shape. I find that yeah. long, like, crescent shapes are more wearable than the larger shawls. Yes. Um, at least for me. Even, like, triangle shawls sometimes, I have an issue, or not an issue, yeah. I have trouble figuring out how to wear it. This is something that you can wear the way that you're wearing it now. Right. Or you could wear it as a scarf. Yep. And do the, you know, make the loop, do the pull yeah. through, I mean, oh, and just have it around your neck. 100%. So you have some options with this, like something, yeah, like that. Yeah. And you get to see, still see, you know, your eyelets. You get to see the colors. It's, I mean, it's like. The shape is just a really good yeah. option for a shawl. Yep. And with the short rows in that, it Ooh, is such like, a quick knit. Like and it uses a larger needle. Yeah, so, so this was knit on a US 6, which is the recommended needle. Mm -hmm. Um and I, you carry the yarn throughout the pattern, so you don't need. There are no other ends to weave in except for the beginning and your, you know, your join there. And then um, you just, it's just short rows. It's increasing short rows. Yeah. So you really don't even need to keep track of when you did your last wrap and turn. You know, like to knit before that. Like once you get to that wrap and turn, you know that you're gonna knit more and then wrap and turn again. You don't need to. The wrap and turns are super easy. Like. And you don't need to resolve those as you come across. Right. You're just, you're knitting them. Which is great for, for if it's your first time ever doing yeah. a short row. Yep. Not having to pick those up or look for them. It's a good way to get comfortable doing short rows and wrap and turns. Mm -hmm. And even reading them a little bit because you'll be able to see them. So if you do a project in the future that does require the pickup, you'll have an idea of what a wrap and turn would look like. Absolutely. And, um... Again, the, I can't say enough about this yarn. I've never worked with anything so luxurious. It is definitely a, um, oops, sorry, a break the, the bank type of you know yarn. But I will highly, I highly recommend um, trying it one day. If yeah, you, you know if, if you, you can, because it's it was really lovely. It's it's definitely luxurious. Um. Yeah, I don't know what else I can say except it was really lovely to to do that, and I'm I'm glad that I have a second one. Um, oh, this is, actually I'm gonna show you my first one. It's right here. You can see the difference now. This is using leading men fiber arts. Yes. Or and um, it's a. It's still very long. It is. You know, but it's um, this is a. I believe it's a hundred percent. No, this is um, has cashmere. Oh yeah, this is right? an MCN. It's an merino MCN. cashmere nylon. It's dirty, dirty truce. Dirty and... truce. I don't remember this one. Yeah, I don't know what that one is, but I know I remember that yeah. one. Yeah, I knit truce. this one a couple years ago, and um, this was my first one. That was supposed to be your Barndom, remember? And you yeah. didn't get and I Barndom didn't. to work. No, that iteration of it. Right. So you right. did that instead. So this is a little bit um, thicker and you know squishier, warmer. And this is just much more a good, of like a... That's a good summer, like... This is a good spring... Like late night summer, absolutely. if it's cool, or spring, yep. fall. Yep. Like, with that little bit of chill in the air, that's a good mm -hmm. um, one. And then again, it just goes to show, like, you can still do the same patterns over again. Just use different types of yarn for different, um, you know, different situations, different seasons. Like, this is definitely much more, like, later fall, like Kevin said, earlier winter kind of thing, or under a jacket... And I think it's a really great gift knit. It only uses 200 gram skeins. A little um, bit less than that. For, so, but, like, yeah. if you have some yarn in your stash and you're not sure what to do with it and you are a gift knitter, that's a really great option mm -hmm. um, for a shawl to gift knit because you can do it fairly quickly. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Highly recommend. Great power. Right. And a lot of you are knitting this for the, the knit along, which has yeah. been really nice to, to see. That's my FO. Okay. So I finally have an FO. It is also something you guys haven't seen. This is stunning. I cast it on and finished it in a week. So I cast it on the Monday after the podcast, and I finished it this past Monday. Um, this is the Zorzel shawl. That's Z as in zebra, O, R as in Robert, Z as in zebra, A, L. Zorzel shawl by um, Lisa Haynes. 
It's Malia Designs. So this pattern was actually recommended to us by our friend Carrie. She's knit this several times. So I decided to give it a shot and I knit it out of my yarn. This is... Oh my God, it's so good. Zorzel. So again, it, a very long crescent shaped shawl with short rows. This dark color is called Twilight. This light blue is called Ghost Water. So you start with a garter tab cast on. Mm -hmm. And this is section one, two, three, and four. This is an incredibly fast knit. You can see you have your I I want to do one. yarn overs on the end. And that's what creates these, that accent, that, that, that yeah. Pattern. You have short rows in all, th these two sections, uh -huh. you have short rows. The stripe sections you don't, I don't think. No, I don't think you, increases. I don't, you have increases in all uh -huh. sections, but I don't think you have short rows in the two striped. Okay. Um, this was a fun, I don't know why. You it's got a fun, so fun freaking knit. Yeah. And the I yarn would do, is gorgeous. I would do another one. I think this is a great gift knit as well. Yeah. This you could have so much fun with, with a solid and a speckle. Or self-striping. Self-striping, solid and a highly variegated yarn. Yeah. Um, it wears pretty similar to the Pure Joy. You know, just boom. Yeah. On. You're good to go. This I brought with me. This is the project I worked on when we were at Skein because mm -hmm. it's super easy. I mean, I'm talking about like easy to memorize within like a row or two rows. You're good to go until you're done with the section. I very rarely had to look at the pattern. Um, so same thing. You could wear it wrapped like this, or I think you could also pull off the like scarfy yeah, look. Through. So um, maybe not because it's oh, actually nice. quite... I think it's a bit wider than your. Oh, maybe you could. No, you probably could. It's not as long, but yeah, totally could. Yeah. Right? I absolutely love this. I love these two colors together. Me I too. wanted to. I never knit with yarn that I dye. I I've know. Done I know. One other project, I used Asteroid Belt in a sock head hat. Yeah. But I think that's the only other time I've. No, I'm sure I have. And but I did, not for I did like those socks me. with your. With. Uh, what for. But I, I just love the frozen breath. these two together. Yes, me too. And you I have love, both of these in the shop. Um, this one is not currently. It will be. Okay. We'll talk about that later. But okay. yeah, this one, uh, Twilight is. It's And what I love, it's so funny to talk. I've talked about this with um, Aaron before, how you can tell that there's variegation in it. And I love variegation in other dyer's yarns. And I don't know why I don't... I, previously didn't like it in mine but i love the variegation in twilight you get some little light bits some darker bits isn't that tonality or no not variegation yeah i meant tonality yeah. thanks so much you're welcome but yeah i love this um it is knit on a size six i believe let's double check mm. what'd you wash it in it's nice the i think they wash it in grapefruit maybe um, what's that stuff called? Euclid. Euclid, yeah. I think. Um, four millimeter US six. Highly recommend it. The pattern does have, the one pictured has tassels on it. I opted to not do the tassels. Mm. And I barely pinned this too. Like, I kind of just laid it flat. I just, I pinned the ends. Oh, okay. Just to like give them a little more pointy look. Um... And you don't have a lot of ends on this, to be honest. I think there were one, two, three, four, maybe, maybe six ends. Because once you get past, oh, this section, you actually don't cut your, the blue here. You keep it attached. Oh, that's nice. So you just carry it. So yeah, you only have, one, two, I think four ends. Wow. I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong, but yeah. So that is the Zorzel shawl. It's really, really Out of great Needles at the Ready, Twilight, and Ghost Water. Yay. I really, I, I'm loving seeing, wait till you all see, I'm, I'm loving seeing the, the yarn. It's like, where are my whips? Way. Okay. So I have two whips and you have three? Uh, I believe so. Well, a hoe and then three more. Okay, so then. I have a lot. 
you can go multiple times. Maybe not as much. Uh, no, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Okay, so. When we did our um, local yarn shop day back in... May? May-ish? April? I don't know. One of those months. Um, we had the pleasure of going out to lunch with um, Jill and Jenny, who were so lovely, and we met up with the, the knitting posse as well. Mm -mm. Just Kate. Oh. Well, Kim and Laura weren't They there. were there in heart. Correct. So um, they gifted us a, some sock tubes with some minis. And um, Kate and I, while they were while they were over, we decided let's cut in some heels and toes. Kind of, um, this was my first time doing uh, heels and toes or break like using a, a sock tube. But I figured I've knit so many vanilla socks, I kind of know my um, you know the construction and like the idea behind it. So Kate and I kind of worked together, and I figured out where we should be, you know, cutting the yarn and stuff. And um, I completed one sock and I'll show you what I have done for the other. So this is what I've got here. That's really pretty. It's pretty, right? Yeah, I like the so, colors. I thanks. like the variegation. Yeah. So um, I don't know what this is, what this, what this sock is, but this is Oink Pigments. Um, I don't know if I have the... This is Oink Pigment I feel in, like I see it's a Targi pigtail. So it's 90% superwash Targi and 10% nylon. It is the color Crochet Me a River. Oh. Crochet Me a River. Ow. Cry Me a River. So I learned that this sock tube was 64 stitches. Um, it fits my foot very, very well. I believe Kate's was 72 stitches. Um, oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. How did you figure... Oh, well, when you picked up the stitches. When we picked up the stitches. So I'll kind of show you my construction, but basically, you know, I, I cut the yarn here, picked up the cuff, you know, after the, the fact, cut in the heel, did an afterthought heel. I do uh, five additional rows of straight knitting to give me a little bit more depth in the heel. Uh, and then I did my heel and the toe the same with the decreases. <laughs> Bless you. My decreases are, um, you can do one more, <coughs> bless you. I knit one SSK, knit Thank to the you. last three stitches, knit two together, knit one. And I repeat that every other round until I get down to 20 stitches. And then I repeat that every round until I got down to uh, 14 for the toe and then 16 for the heel, just to keep it a little bit wider on the bottom. Didn't you used to do 12 for your toe? Yeah, but I found that um, this fits my foot my foot much much better otherwise like the this is gonna sound weird but the decrease you could feel the decreases like at the tip of like my pinky toe okay and it was kind of awkward yeah, so i left sure. the decreases a little bit longer so it, it fits my foot very well that makes sense yeah and then here and i'm probably going to rip out the bind off for this i tried something new so i like the cut i love the cuff i opted i didn't think i was going to have enough of the contrast to do um an entire cuff so I did eight rows of a two by two rib. I added four rows of a stripe. And then um, I did six more of the uh, two by two rib in the leftover yarn. And I'll show you there in a second. And then I wanted to bind off in that contrast color. So um, one of the, the tricks in adding, uh, let me see if you can see, in adding a, another color in there to avoid that, that weird like bump sometimes that you see of the of the two different yarns when you join it in is you knit one round of the new color. So when I joined in this blue, I knit a straight round of that blue and then I started the the ribbing. And you cannot tell that there's a break there. And if you stretch it out, you you know, you can see a slight like knit row, but it it still pulls everything together. You don't even see it, but it eliminates that weird bump you get when you're striping and ribbing. Yes. So um, I did that, and then I also at the join because you can't you can't see where I added the additional color to avoid the jog. What I do also is once I add the color, I knit around, and then I pick up 
the stitch below, the right leg of the stitch below, bring it up top and then knit those two together. And it eliminates that, um, that weird jog and it creates like a very seamless transition. Mm -hmm. So my stripes are, my stripe is even there. So the reason why I wanted to try something different, I don't do very many toe up socks, but I've done enough where I've tried the, I tried, tried Jenny stretchy, you know, bind off. I've done a sewn bind off, um, a knit through the back loop kind of bind off. So I wanted to try a simple elastic bind off and just to see how it would look. I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, I think it's a little bit messy. When it's on my leg, then I figured, you know what, when it's on my leg, it's not gonna be a problem, right. but it still looks very messy on my uh, on my leg. And I'll put it on and, and you can see. So what this, this bind off is, it's a two, I did a two by two rib. So I bound off um, in pattern through the back loops of the knit stitches and through the front loop of the purl stitches. So it was a tutorial I found by Very Pink Knits and it looked like a really cool bind off. It was not done in the round though. It was flat and it, you know, it looked really cool. Yes. And it's for sure like super stretchy, but it's just, it's a, it's kind of a little bit of a mess there. So what so, you could try, Tracy did this recently. Yeah. Um, from the Grocery Girls, she did a toe up. Yep. Or she did from a tube. She did an Italian bind off. That's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna either I'm gonna do a sewn bind off for this, and um, Italian bind off, sewn bind off are interchangeable. Interchangeable, I think. So that's what I'm gonna do. I've done that before. That was my most successful toe up sock. Okay. So um, before I put this on, let me just show you like what I have done with this. So I have my second one going. I cut in the heel already, and I did the toe, and now I'm working on the cuff. I switched to Magic Loop to do the cuff. I was struggling a little bit. Both of my Chow Goo 9-inch circular needles are being used. So I had to use a 10-inch circular. And the point, you're not gonna be able to see this, but it's a very dull point on the top. So I'm having some, tr I was having some trouble. Well, that's an Addy too, right? Yeah. So you typically use Chow Goo? I do. So I was having some trouble there. This is the leftover tube. So I, the tubes are huge. Kevin will show you. Yeah. Um, so we, I cut the first part down and then I cut the bottom part from here. And now what I'm doing is I'm just pulling like you would a sock blank and knitting, you know, knitting there, but you know, it's ramen noodles. So, um, so it was a little bit more, it was a little bit difficult with this. I needed to have like more accurate sticking in. So I'm using my chow goo, um, there. So that's what I'm doing for this. Instead of winding this into a ball, I'm soaking it. I don't care, I'm, you know, it's a sock. It'll be just fine. Um, I'm knitting with that. And so with this, so anyway, I'm gonna pick this out. That's why I didn't weave in my ends yet there. I'm gonna pick that out um, and do the Italian bind off or the sewn bind off there. But again, I don't care usually if there's a flare on the, you know, on the cuff or anything like that usually. But this one, yeah. this one's a little bit funky. Yeah. Do you see that? Yeah. It so looks, like, it actually doesn't close just, well. No. You can see through it. Right. Yeah, I get. I would take it out too. Right. So it's yeah. very. It's like it's weird. It's kind of like rolling on itself. Yeah, I I agree. I so, think that would be but a good option. To take again, off. it's a lesson learned. Yeah. So this is not the bind off for me. Um, but I love, I love the added stripe in there. I thought that was really fun. Oh, thank you. You said that again. Yeah. But you can see, like, I'm, I am going to block these. Usually I don't block my socks anymore. But I will block these just so that I can loosen up those stitches so you don't have that, um, that ramen noodle kind of look there. Nice. Yeah, so that's, um, that's that one project. And I have, I have this much left over. In retrospect, I, I probably might have had enough to do a cuff. But I'm. I like the stripe. Yeah. I think that that's that that's good. But um. Mm, excuse me. I'm very tired, y'all. Sure. I did not sleep well. But last Jill and night. Jenny, thank you guys so much. Um, I feel like that was really fun, and it, I think the more that I do it, the the faster and more com more confident I will be at adding in those tubes. And toes. Which we're gonna have tubes a plenty. I know. I've got a trainer. So for those of you who don't know, this is what a sock tube looks like. This is the one that they gave me. So huge. 
It's huge. It's cranked on a, I think they have an Erlbacher mm -hmm. uh, Gearhart, and I believe this is probably, this feels like it's Regia. Maybe. It feel, It looks like a Regia. And it's then I have- patterning. Yeah, I have a Lolo did it um, Lolo, in Folsom. Lolo. This is the everyday sock. Yeah. So maybe I'll do mine soon. You should. So basically what I, what I was saying is I took this, like I cut, you know, I measured out what I wanted, you know, cut here, and then from the other side, measured that down, cut, and then I had this, you know, leftover, and that's where I was using, that's where I got all that extra. And the, I think the from. leftover yarn from the tube you could use in, like, a scrappy project. Oh, absolutely. Um, I love the colorway. I think the color is beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, actually, you're talking about the sock and talking about striping. I did want to go back to Skein Yarn Shop for just a moment. Yeah. Um, I got some really cool yarn from there with... Uh, I they have a podcast, oh, yeah, which I forgot to mention. Their podcast is yeah, the Skein Skein Scoop. Scoop podcast. It's cute. So go subscribe to them. Because have we I not learned... said that before? I'm so sorry. No, I don't think we did. But because I learned or I saw two things that were pretty interesting in the most recent hi, episode. Mom. I hi, think. mom texted. Oh, hi, mom. So two things. Justine was knitting socks and she showed a pair where instead of doing the stripes in the cuff, she did the stripes... She did stripes in the leg of the sock, like maybe three, and then one at the toe area I right that. before the toe. It was really, really pretty. Yeah, I really I liked, liked that. that a lot. And then she gave a tip for sweaters, which I thought was pretty great tip. So if you know your row gauge for sweaters, if you know you're getting, let's say, 12 rows per inch. Mm -hmm. Instead of always having to measure your sweater, if you put a stitch marker along the side every 12 rows, you can count those to know how many inches right. you've knit from your underarm. And I was like, oh. Without having to pull out your like tape measure or laying out your project, making sure it's I all... I know. I was like, oh, that's really yeah. smart. I would have never right. thought of that. So I and will do that to, in the future for right. sweaters. And to put the marker in between both stitches catch both v's catch both yeah both legs of the stitch so that you're not if you do both snag v's, it sorry. you don't break the yarn right. like you're not yep distorting it or whatever so yep. definitely go check out their podcast also please thank you have a great day please and thank you i said good day sir good day um how i officially have three more i only have two so you go again okay um let's stay on the sock theme i'll just stay here with all the information informative stuff you are very informative just your energy has been Duh. is great oh i also have this and every this is like the never I bag this is have got to go things. through all my bags and find that it's my favorite because it has stitch stoppers in there it has tapestry i don't needles. know what the brand is otherwise we got it at knit new haven yeah but it's this i love oh plastic it thing. opens up i you can keep your stitch markers in there oh i gotta sneeze again bless you yeah i have a <coughs> bless you Darning needles, like whatever. It's really okay. <laughs> Thank you. It's really lovely to have. I know. I love that thing, and I can't find my green one. It's got to be in one of my fifteen million five hundred and sixty-nine project bags. I just don't know which one. Yeah, we have to do a special. We have to actually no, move that because that's what? where our bird's gonna go. I have an idea for a special. I because I think it was when we were somebody at Scheme asked us how many hats were in our hat bin. So I thought it would be really fun to do one, like on an off week of a podcast, do a hat bin episode. Okay. And on another off week, do the shawl bin episode. Cause we have, we each have our own shawl bin and then we have a combined hat bin, which may or may not have some like fingerless mitts in there, I think. They are in there. So we should do that one time. Yeah. All right, go ahead, please. Thank you. Okay, so the next project is living in my matter root bag that we got at Maryland Sheep and Wool that I absolutely um, love. It's actually a lot bigger than it looks. looks as well. Yeah. Okay, so I made some progress on my ginger snap that um, marled lumberjack socks. Is that what it's called, lumberjack? It is something lumberjack. Yeah, lumberjack sock set uh, in my in their marled mighty marled fingering base. This is by Ginger Snap. Um, I, this is kind of what I've been knitting on. This is what I knit on, I think, at Skein. I just wanted to do something simple. I get distracted very, very easily, and I love to talk. Oh. So 
we Kevin, both do. Kevin always ends up yelling at me like, "Why do you? Why do you Wait. start these complicated things when you know you're going to make a mistake?" Because w- if you do knit on something that is not complicated, but that has things that you have to pay attention to, once we leave whatever place we're at where you're working on it, then you get home and you're like oh, I dropped 15 stitches, or oh, I forgot to do this cable, or oh, I forgot to do that. So my recommendation is always just knit on something that's like a sock, where it's just stock knit, and you don't have to worry about it. Okay. So I did. I followed I followed the rules. <laughs> and this is what I have um, so far. It's knitting it's up. It's so good. Isn't it good? The like... um, I talked about this last time. I This is the same technique I used on the other sock for the stripes. I used here as well, so I knit... I knit a row um, before the, the I, I absolutely love it. Um, the lighting's a little bit darker, but there you go. You can see. This is where my heel's going to go. So I'm down to my foot. Um, and it's just, you know, it's just round and round and round. I think the colorway is Kai. K-A-I. Yeah. Um, Kai. And it came with two minis and the... Um, Here's the one of the marled minis there, and the other one is here. So, yeah, there's Kevin's set. I can't wait for you to, to do it. I think you're going to have so much fun. So I'm trying to figure out how I want my toe to be. I believe I'm going to do um, this as my toe. I think I'm going to do the toe. I'm going to fade into the toe like, um, like the Coffee Talk Socks by Tracy Miller. Because I really love how that looks, that detail. Yeah. Um, so I might do that and fade that in with the blue here. And then I might do um, the black as the heel. I think that could look kind of cool. Are you going to have enough black for the other heel? I don't know. I don't know. I could always stripe that too, like do like a, a bullseye kind of situation. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Um, it's really fun. I, I love it. It's it's cool. I did, just because I didn't want to forget after I was done with my sock, though I could have written things down. Um, I've been really bad at that. I did the cuff of the other sock as well. So nice. I'm just ready to, uh, and it's the same, you know, it's exactly the same. So I'm just ready to add that once I'm done with the first sock. Very nice. Yeah. I mean, my next projects are just kind of little bits here and there. Um, oh, that bird. that's why actually I wanted to do the Zorzel is that I just, for me, I needed like, I needed a palette cleanser from all of my projects. Mm-hmm. So I needed something different. Um, and that's why I did the Zorzel. It was, and now it kind of got me going with the other projects. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. So that's that. Those are them. Those are them. Um, and I'm down to now two projects to show. Okay, so I will go next because I only have two additional to show. Okay. Um, these are living in my Hohe & Co. Pampa bucket, which I love. Yeah. It's actually deceiving. Like, Oh, it's humongous. It's actually quite big. Yeah. It's pretty deceiving. So I am also knitting some socks. These are the Day Hike socks by Woolens & Nash. I now have both um, off the needles, and I just need to do my heels so i'm actually waiting for some yarn our friend carrie also has this colorway and she is sending me some yarn because i don't know that i'm going to have enough to do the um heels so i would like to do a bullseye heel i think you probably do have enough but of the same colors right i am down to i see the blue all right so I also, when I do an afterthought, I do five to seven additional rows of knitting before I start the decreasing. Mm-hmm. And I decrease down to a total of, I think a total of 16 stitches or 32? No, 16. 16 on each needle? I think you do six. Yeah, I think you do 16. Because I do 16 on each needle for, I think for my toe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So same thing for my heel. I decrease down until I have 16 stitches on each of my needle doing magic loops, so 32 stitches. 
So cut it in half pretty much. But I have this and this left. Hmm. Maybe I do have enough. Did you weigh it? No, but I'm looking now. It's just it's wound obviously very tight. I couldn't see how many color repeats I have. And if I base my heel off my toe, and I would need one, two, three and a half stripes to do it. I didn't think I was going to have enough, so I may actually be okay now that I'm looking at this. If I... They may not match, though. You may not be able to get... No, but... So this that's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Here's an orange, and yeah. I have orange there. So if I start at the orange, yeah. I should be able to get through... The orange, the brown, and the blue. You could just you could um, rewind it and see where you're at with everything. Yeah, and I have. Hello, yeah, maybe I will. Okay, Great. so, but that's why I stopped. I wasn't sure that I would have yeah. enough, but now that the colors are showing a little bit more, that more yarn is off the cake, I can see that I have two repeats left. So I might be okay. So I'll probably finish these today. Great. So I knit these magic loop. I do a German twisted cast on, 64 stitches. I do it at the exact point where a color change happens. That's mm -hmm. where my slip knot goes. So the top of the sock is one color, one row of the color, and then it just picks up the striping. When I get to a color change in the striping, I do the same thing where I just knit around to not get that break in the pearl bumps. Yes. And I did, I think it was about 18 rows for my cuff. Then I just knit and yeah. Again, we love Olin's and Ash. We do. Socks, I, it's very one much. of my favorite sock bases because it is so sturdy and 90% Targi, 10% nylon. And the color stripes are just so, we said it last, I said it last week. They're just so clean. They're perfect. And now we know how she does them. Right. Because we've seen it in person. We got the secret sauce. So that is whip number one. Very close to being done. And it should be for the next episode. Good. Um, this next project was a new cast on. Um, I, you know, I think we got, we were so excited um, after leaving Nitty Gritty Yarn Shop, Nitty Gritty Girl Yarn Shop. Um, we just wanted to cast, I wanted to cast something new on. He wanted to cast something new on too. And I didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't. I think I threw you because we chose the same pattern and I, you don't like to be samesies. So. No, I just really enjoyed knitting the shawl. I was knitting Zorzel and that was flying off my freaking needles. So I really, I know, really enjoyed it. So we each got this yarn and Kevin will show you his in a little while. But um, Jody Long is, um, and we have, I think... Uh, a book too, which we can talk about afterwards. here. I'll bring, no, we might as well talk about it together because this is a yarn that sh at their shop, they carry a bunch of different bases and I've never seen it that I can recall at any other store. Me neither. So, um, and we also got a book of patterns yeah. by Jody Long. So this is the yarn, Jody Long, their Alba, in his Alba base. It is a uh, Merino and Alpaca tweed so it's 50% wool, 25% alpaca, and 25% viscose. It's uh, 382 yards in a 100 gram um, ball. So it's a sport weight, I would say. Because huh. fingering would be just above, is 400 or more typically. Um, so I would say that this is probably a sport weight. And I purchased so... the color winter. So I love all the little flex in it. I might, I'm, I might. This might not be right. No, you might be fine. I might not be. Well, we'll you see. Cannot, I mean, this is called Earth. I love the speckles in there. J um, with the little, um, little pops of like blues. There's like green, little yellow. Uh, yeah, no yellow. No, like an orangey. Can yeah. um, going back to the composition and the it being sport. With the, well, you haven't said the project that you're working on, huh? No. So I'll mention it after you say it. Go ahead. <laughs> so I'm doing the Sockhead Slouch Hat by Kelly McClure. I haven't done one in a while. And it's one of my very favorite, it is my favorite um, hat pattern. 
So it is four inches of ribbing, follow, it's a free pattern. We'll have that link down below. It's four inches of ribbing. Then you do, um, you know, whatever you like. I usually like to do about six and a half to seven inches before I start my decreases of the st um, stockinette, just in the round, super fun. The ribbing um, looks really cool. I've done these with the one by one rib. You can definitely choose your own adventure there. I didn't have the correct needles with us, so it gave me an excuse to, um, I think, I'm not sure where I put it, but it gave me an excuse to get some new needles to try. Oh, I found them. So I got the Lika, Lika, Likey, you know how everybody says, um, needles, gro they're groove needles. It's uh, bamboo, 16 inch circulars in a three millimeter needle, which is my, my preferred, um, gauge for a sock head slouch and fingering weight yarn. However, uh, this is likely a sport weight yarn, but it should be okay still now that I'm looking at it. Although my, my, uh, my ribbing might be a little bit, it might be a little bit too big. So what I was going to mention about that and the difference with this, and it could be a good thing for you is that all of your previous hats, if I'm not mistaken, were super wash yarn. Yeah. So those will stretch quite a bit. So you may be okay with this because you're not going to get that same, you'll get, it's going to stretch the ribbing, mm -hmm. but it's not going to stretch the way Superwash does because right. Superwash doesn't have that grippiness that a non-Superwash yeah. does. So I think, I actually think you're going to be okay. okay. You may check your gauge when you get like an inch in, see what your gauge is on the hat. I don't check gauges on hats. No, I know that, but... You don't also don't want to knit the hat yeah, and get to the end of it because it's 11 inches of knitting before you bind off and be like, oh, I'm not going to wear it because who the heck are you going to give it to if it's too big for you? So I would do it. And then what you could do, you know, I wish we had had this conversation last week. It would have been appropriate when you saw me buy all the supplies. <laughs> well, I didn't. Because I get distracted. But the funny thing is, is I don't know that I thought about it being a sport weight because my thought also is to do a sock head with it. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think I have a sock head out of non-superwash. Okay. But with all of that being said, I thought I maybe I would be okay because I always go down a needle size anyways because my sock head is too loose for me on, with superwash. Sure. Um, so I also, because I had the intention of casting on, I had also bought some licka likey honey ho, make a licka honey, honey, honey ho needles. And I got, I forgot what size I typically use. So I bought a 2.75, which is a US two and a US two and a half, which is a three millimeter to try out. Cause I've never tried this brand of needle. Mm, me neither. Um, I, I usually don't knit with wooden needles, um, but I have to say that these are actually really, um, really nice. The needle, like the stitches slide really well. The yarn is a little bit on the toothier side, um, which is actually like rustic side, we'll say. Um, tactile. It's tactile. But, but I'm still like, things slide really, you know, really easily. And this is always the complaint about cords that aren't chagged. I know. Oh, I think I literally felt something snap. Yeah, I hate, I don't like the cord either, but once it's on the, you know, and in the round, like if you're going to do magic loop or something like that, I would never use these cords. Um, oh no, I would not. Oh no. Oh no, I would not do yeah. magic loop for these. Uh, yeah. And I know we could put them in boiling water and it would straighten them out, but, um, yeah. Yeah. Agreed. So that is my sock head slouch by Kelly McClure. It's, um, it's just, I don't know. I just, it gives me all the, all the joy. Well, I'm glad that you're joyful. I am joyful. All right. So my next whip is living in my, um, fancy boy designs bag, sloth, yoga sloth. It's a very cute. It bag. is super cute. So this is my... Hohe Summer Cal with Mayak Knit Along Project. I'm knitting Hohe's pattern called At Dawn, and I'm using Mayak's 50% uh, Baby Yak, 50% Silk in Savitri and... 
I said Tershace and it's not. It's No. I can't say it. Tershi Tersh. I don't know how to say it. This is how it's spelled. And I forgot how it was said. So this is the at dawn. It is like a triangle shaped shawl. It is knit on a much smaller needle as well than Ray's Pure Joy. You knit yours, I believe that was a six. six. Mine is like a US two. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, let's just double check for you all. Needles, US two and a half, a three millimeter. So this is what I have. It is knit in two sections. You have section A and section B. It is, oh, I should show you all the shawl, right? Sure, sure, sure. So here's it on a hanger, and here is the, there's a really good picture. It's really pretty. Pattern. Those colors are nice. Here's the picture pattern. in the pattern, right? Is it better to do, oh my gosh, look at that. Yeah, it's pretty. Really, really pretty. Gorgeous. So, here's where I'm at. And I hit a bit of a snag, and I just need to sit down and figure it out. Yeah. So this is mine so far. And I finished the first section. I'm on section two, which will all be this like gold color. And then the stripe will be the blue. But I love your color choices. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really pleased with the color choices. Yeah. It's very interesting because this is a much different, um, mine is much denser than yours. It's yes. like, it's Well, because not, of the gauge. Right, it's not see-through. Yeah. So where my mistake came in and I don't know why. I don't know why I struggled with the first part of this pattern so much. This section here was supposed to be 30 rows of knitting. Mm -hmm. And I did 32. So it has messed up my short row count. So my short rows on this stripe here would have been like two stitches. And it had to be... I don't know, let's say eight. So I fudged it. And now I don't know how to fudge it on the other side so that my stripes match up again. Hmm. So now I'm supposed to knit and then get a blue short row here. And my numbers don't match. So I'm either debating on making them not match and say, whatever. It is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. And maybe it could look interesting not being symmetrical because I mean, striping it doesn't necessarily look symmetrical in the picture yeah i mean you know like it it doesn't so scream here, symmetry it does it doesn't but they line up well enough but i mean there's, i know you know so, i think you have a little bit of leeway there yeah where you can get away with that for sure so Although don't tell laura she doesn't like mistakes which Laura? Our um, our our newest friend. Skin yarn shop Laura. Mm -hmm. I typically don't either, I so know. I definitely wasn't ripping this back out to the beginning to fix that. So I'll just figure that out. Um, I think now that I've completed the other shawl, yeah, and I had a palette cleanser, I can sit down and just make that. Once I make that one decision, the rest of this is going to fly off the needle. So yeah. So yeah, I think it's an enjoyable knit. I love the the look of it. I like the stripes. Again, it's another short row. Um, the first section is quite long. That's when you have the m most number of stitches on your needle, somewhere in the two to 300 range. Yeah. So it does take a little bit to complete. But once I got that first gold stripe in here, this is the first one. Once I got past that, the rest of this just flew. I think I did... So after the last podcast, I had this stripe done. I had just gotten mm -hmm. there. I did the rest of this that Saturday and Sunday because I had cast on the other shawl that following Monday. So really, really quick knit once you get past that first section. And I think the next section will go pretty quickly as well until I get to that final section. Once you, you know, actually pick that up, like you said, like you went... It went really fast. Right. I couldn't believe how much you were how much you were putting in that. Okay. So that is it on whips 
for me. I have one last one. This one I made quite a bit of progress on. And um, I'm now at a part where it's a little bit, it's gonna take a little bit more focus for me. Um, I've gotta make sure that I set myself up for success. success. This is the Multigrain by Ann Hansen uh, at Knit Spot and Bare Naked Wools. It's a really cool, oversized, um, comfy sweater in a broken rib pattern with some cable details up the sides and then some on either side of the raglan. It's knit bottom up. And it is, um, once you get to the yoke, there's some neck shaping, there's raglan, so it's not a rounded yoke. My one other bottom up sweater was a rounded yoke. So it was a lot easier to maintain the decreases once you get up here. So here you're doing a raglan um, decrease and you're doing neck shaping as well as uh, body decreases too, like kind of worked in there. So And you need to maintain that cable pattern as part of the raglan. So it's a little bit much, mm -hmm. um, So, but it's gonna look stunning. I made, like I said, I made quite a bit of progress. I attached my sleeves finally, which is great. So here's where I, what I have so far. Um, Very nice. Thank you. I was down there where that stitch marker is. Oh the yeah, last you did time. a ton. Yeah, I did. So I knit all of that, and then I just, I think I'm on row three after attaching the sleeves. Okay. So you, I knit the sleeves first. Um, there's the cable detail along the inside there, which is really cool. And um, that's going to now continue. I just started building that. You're definitely not going to be able to see it, but just started building that right here in the corner on either side. Um, so that's where the raglan is going to be. The yarn that I'm using is uh, Bare Naked Wool in their Stone Soup DK. So it's pretty much everything under the sun. The color is marble. Um, and it's a, it's a really lovely, um, it's a really lovely yarn. It's a lovely pattern. It's super squishy and it is, so this is DK, but there is definitely some weight to this sweater. So this is going to feel much more like a sweatshirt. Um, and that's kind of what I was going for. So I'm really, really excited about this. I don't want to... I might put a lifeline in before I start my shaping, just in case, because I'm a little bit nervous about all of the things I have to manage. And each each decrease and each section is done after a certain, like, you know, on a certain row, and they're all different rows. So you might be doing a raglan decrease on one row, and then four rows after that, you do another raglan decrease. But two rows prior to that, you need to do, a, you know, neck shaping or whatever the case is. So... I want to set myself up for success, so I think I'm going to create a little chart for myself to do that. Um, and I'm knitting this on US sevens. It's been it's been really fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very nice textured sweater, so I think it's yeah. going to look great once it's done. I think so the, too. We both have been working with the wool. It's it's really a really fantastic so yarn, good. and it was really cool. So the reason, like, we were introduced to bare naked wool by Kate, our first year at Rhinebeck, yeah. Kate purchased yarn to make her husband a sweater, if I'm not mistaken. Then our friend Robin, who we got to see at Skein, mm -hmm. um, bought each of us a pattern from Knit Spot, aka Bare Naked Wolves. What was really cool is that she had a sweater there that she was working on using the Stone Soup DK in the same color that I have mine in, which is granite. Yeah. And then Susan showed a picture. She had knit the same sweater that I'm knitting, I think in your color, if I'm not mistaken, for her husband, the same one, the V-neck. So that was really fun to um, see totally. all that in person. Yeah. Oh, speaking of V-necks, thank you for saying that. This sweater pattern includes instructions for both a V-neck and a crew neck. I'm going to do a crew neck because my I was going for that sweater, that sweater sweatshirt type of feel. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to do the crew neck. So thanks for saying that. This is the um, the yarn there, uh, Stone Soup DK. 
And we've talked about this before, but it's 80% wool, which is a blend of Rambouillet, Columbia, Lincoln, Churro, 15% alpaca and llama, and then 5% of tensile, bamboo, silk, and bison. So it's got a lot of things in there. Oh, and this was part of our little gift from our friends at Skein Yarn Shop. Oh, good. I'll show mine too. Yeah. I, um, they, so Kevin's got the packaging. Have you all seen this thing before? The Big Sully? It's actually really, really neat. So in here, yeah. So it's kind of, it's like uh, you knit out of this. Um, let's see if I can do this backwards. Probably not. Let's not do that. Oh, this is, let's not do the wrong thing. So um, basically what you do is you put your yarn on this little spindle here, which comes out. Um, and you can pull through the the different holes that are in this little contraption. Of course, it's hard and to it has hold up. four. So let's see, it says easy feed, yarn spindle, yes. ball tray, non-slip, and it has needle gauges. Yeah, so the needle gauges are right on top. That's cool, I didn't I see that. Yeah. Um, you can put your needles and hooks in like a little docking station if you wanted to. The, uh, the band here is also a ruler. I was just gonna say there's a ruler. There's an elastic band that kind of keeps it closed. It has a ruler on there as well. It's a very like simple thing, but it's the yarn sits here and you just, you pull and as you pull it spins. Is it up. supposed to go under the spindle? What do you mean? The yarn. Like yours looks like it's coming from under yeah. The so spindle. some I think I screwed it up because when I was doing the uh, the thing. So, so yeah, they were. So it fixes itself, but like, yeah, it just it just you pull it off as you're as you're going instead of getting snagged in your um. What you call it in your bag? It's super cool. I'm gonna have this set up for color work. Um, a, a few of them were using this at the skiing yarn shop. Yeah, and I just really like impressed with it it just it keeps things so easy and it's got like a rubber bottom down here so it sits non-slip non-slip and it works on the couch too so i have it sitting on the couch while i was laying down um knitting from it and it said that there's actually six channels so i see one two three four five where's the other channel for the yarn to come out of on the top right here so that would be five right am i counting no, on one this. Yes. So I just asked one, two, three, four, five. Oh. Where's the sixth one, you think? I'm not sure. I don't know. You... Huh. That's okay. But yeah, no, it, it's super cool. I had, I never saw I've never one. seen anything I never like seen, this either. I mean, um, I, yeah, I've never seen this one. So thank you. Yeah, ladies. it's super cool. And it's like, you know, instead of a yarn bowl where, you know, your yarn just kind of like spins and spins, there's also a tray um that can sit in there if you don't want to use the the spindle or if you oh, want to nice. use the spindle you can it'll kind of keep it separated a little bit more um but i wanted to try to use that that spindle um the plus the yarn cake was pretty large so it wouldn't fit on just one side of here oh okay yeah so that's why i did it but now that i, I don't know i'll give it a try but i've got a color work sweater coming up that i i would like to try this with um with color work and you can open this up like you're not committed to having the yarn coming out of whatever hole that you're yeah you can always take it off the spindle doing. once you're done with it totally. too so so anyway that's, that's pretty been yeah so that's been working out really well um and it worked out perfectly because i needed to skein up a, an additional or cake up an additional skein to to uh to pick back up the sweater so i was able to do that um and then yeah that's it that's right. i think those are all of my those are all of my whips. So that's all the actual stuff we've knitted on. Next, we're gonna go into some shop update. Okay. So I'm just gonna show some stuff that's still currently there and then some stuff that's new. All right, so we're gonna take those out and this out and this out and then this out. So the new stuff first. Most of the stuff doesn't have any names. Everything will be in the shop. I'll do a shop update this upcoming Monday yeah. at 
12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So this will be a restock, this color. It's not new. This is um, Wild Orchid. It's so Which pretty. is like a pinky, magenta-y. It's coming across. It's like, it's like, it's very bright. Yeah, like a it is almost. a very bright um, pink color. So this mm -hmm. is going to, this is Wild Orchid. And the other one that will be restocked is this, which is Ghost Water. Yeah. And all of these tonals are on a 100% Superwash fingering weight four ply, which I love. Superwash Merino. Yeah. They're, four ply. Th those it's, are pretty together too. Yeah. yeah. These are really pretty wow. together. So Ghost Water is in this colorway, which is florals for spring groundbreaking you can see it down here this is on a 75 25 fingering weight so that's where the inspiration for this color came from after i dyed this mm -hmm. this would also go well with bejeweled yes this would go well with bejeweled oh yeah i don't have it up here but i think ballet slipper would go well with it because there's mm. a little bit of pink in here so those are two additional these colors. and ballet slipper might look really nice as a... These are so pretty. Do you know, this is a color I didn't see, a combo, but Kate did one. No, Kim did when she was here. These two together. This is Char Hu, Chartreuse, and this is on 80-20 fingering. Yeah. So she put these two together. I was like, oh, I never would have paired them, but I like them. Yeah, I like them too. Really good. All right, so the rest of these... I'm going back to the new stuff. Some of them don't have names, so I gotta get creative within the next 48 hours. This one does, however. This is Peony. Yeah. So this is a pinky, almost leaning purple. It's definitely a purpley, pinky, lavender-y. Yeah, it, it has some lavender tones to it, but it is, oh, it's actually in here also. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can see some of it here. So, I love that you are pulling colors from there because then they would automatically like go together too. Like, right. So then these really... two would go together. Yeah. And um, they would also go with that if you wanted two solids and a speckle. Yeah. Like how pretty is that? That's gorgeous. Um, then the next three colors I'm going to show, I actually dyed them two because I thought they went together well when I was testing colors. And one of these potentially has a name. Yeah, that's great. So these three, this one is either, it. Re, rem, it's a sandy color. Yep. I wanted, I didn't have any neutral other than, well, this is kind of neutrally. Mm -hmm. um, I think navy or like a dark blue can be neutral. And I have winter steel, which is a light gray. Yes. But I didn't have any browns or beiges that are neutral. So when I did some color testing, I did these three with two others, but these three really popped out to me and I thought they would be beautiful in like a three color shawl. Absolutely. They, they remind me of like a hike for some reason. So this one reminded me of sand. Yep. And I was like, I'm not, I didn't think about naming it sand. And I, then I thought sand dune, but there's actually a dye powder from Dharma called sand dune. So I didn't want to do that. But then Dune reminded me of Dune. The movie? Yeah, the so book? then I was like, oh, maybe I'll name it Arrakis, which is the planet that it takes place on. Or I also thought about calling it Desert Power because they always talk about Desert Power in the movie Dune. So it's going to end up being one of those. These two I don't know yet, but these are beautiful. They are. I just think these three together would be really pretty. Um, and then... I also have this one, which is like a tealy blue, almost. This one I love. I might mm -hmm. steal a skein and knit something with it. Yeah, it's nice. And it's different than... Um, Twilight. Twilight. Oh, Twilight's over there. So you can see the difference between the two of these. This was also intended to go with here, which it act absolutely could for sure a pop. Yeah. But I wanted a much lighter blue. It didn't come out the way that I expected. Um, so I'm going to re calibrate Ooh, that um color but i love what when it did come out i was like oh i really really love this blue <laughs> um and then this is one is interesting right so this, this 
I thought was a really beautiful red. I think it is. It's stunning. It leans orange. However, they look identical on here. They do. This one is slightly lighter. I didn't realize like that. A, a stitch. Yeah, very little. I went back and looked at the recipe for this one, and it's a different composition than this one, right? This one has more yellow in it, so this one leans more orange. Red is just such a fickle color to get on camera. You did, though. It's, it no, looks, I meant on camera. You um, can't tell it, the difference between these. A little bit you can. On this camera. one is, um, let's see maybe a little bit more now. This one is much more saturated than this. Mm -hmm. This one leans more orange and that one leans more red. Yeah. So I have to make a decision about these in which one of them I want to keep. I, I think you should keep the more saturated one, this and, one and call it Flame On. So this one is I think called that should be Flame, your on. New Flame On. Yeah. This may replace it yeah, because I it's think you similar should. but different. Yep. Um, and then I've also dyed... I mean, congratulations on getting a really nice saturated red that's not bleeding a lot in your pots. Yeah, it right? doesn't. It, I mean, it did. there was some slight bleeding You're always going to have a little bit of that, I think. But Wash it, but yeah. nothing compared to what I've tried in the past. Right. So I've also dyed up um, Monster U on... It's such a fun color. BFL. So this is 75% oh, yeah. BFL, 25% nylon. Yeah. Um, also did some more of rhubarb. On the BFL, I will say I have to check this again. Um, it's not as vibrant, and it could be because of the BFL. Normally, rhubarb has a much more um, pinkness mm -hmm. to it. So I still think it's beautiful. It just looks a little bit different. There's actually a little more peach tones in it. And this... It's still really pretty. Somebody had asked if I had colors. If I dyed a set to go with rhubarb and I hadn't yet. And I've been toying with the idea of like what to pick. Sure. But then I thought, well, hot damn. Like, I think these three could go. Interesting. Right? Or I thought even this one might go with rhubarb. Hmm. But then I also thought... That sandy one. This peach that would pick up some of the pink and peach tones in there. So this might actually be a good option. Because you do have some dark greens in here and some like yellowy colors. So, I don't know. That could be an idea. And then... You've been busy. This is a one of a kind. So I ran into some issues with dyeing two weeks ago. When the yarn is soaking and I let it soak typically for a minimum of an hour, I would I like to do at least like two to four. But I don't know. A pre-soak. A pre-soak before you dye it. Mm -hmm. And um, I dye it using reusable zip ties so it's easy like to keep it together, blah, blah, blah. Plus it's more environmentally friendly. Correct. But when it was soaking, one of the zip ties, and this has happened twice to me, so I have to throw them out and I've kept them aside, must have some type of dye left on it, and it started dyeing the skeins in the pre-soak purple. It was, so it was really like, interesting. Okay, well, I have to do something. So this, I dyed with a different shade of purple, some, like, dark green, yeah. and then some gray speckles. It's really nice. So the there, speckles are great. So there will be a single brew with this. There's a single brew of just two different shades of purple that will be in the shop. And then I think there's one other single brew color that didn't turn out the way that I thought. So again, I will have the shop updated this upcoming Monday at 12 p.m. Eastern time. And there will be a ton of yarn. There's still a good amount of yarn in there from previous updates. So go um, have a peek seat. And I think that's it for shop updates. I think so too. I just, I've been loving the tonals. I've been loving watching you come up with those. I think it's really cool. And I've been loving the color testing. Yeah. Um, I'll bring that up next time to show how I've been storing them in in the little floss bin and mm -hmm. the bobbins. Because that's new for me. Yeah. I'm much more organized now than I was when I was working full time and trying to do this on the side. Okay. All right, so next up is 
I will post. I will post. I have one. You should have one then. Because I don't see it here with the stuff you left for me. I have it. Okay. Okay. So we have two other... We got two packages in the mail in the past um, couple of weeks. One is from a friend, Rachel. She was very generous and had very some generous. yarn and wanted to donate for a prize for the Let's Hear It for the Boys. Knit along or Mal. So we have, I think this should be two. Two separate prizes. Two separate prizes, yeah, it's, right? It's packed up really pretty. It's packed up really well. This is um, La Bien May and their Merino DK and the colorway Yellow Brick Road. It's so so this has two full skeins. One's caked up and one isn't. And another one that is one's caked up and one isn't. So these will go so out to chinese. two of you all um, at the end of wow. the knit along. So thank you very much, Rachel. She's Guys, a lovely human being. Get in your projects because we have that's a lot. We have a lot. We have of a lot of prizes. To, yeah. We're gonna have to organize have a lot that. of chances. I have it all in the bag. Then. Oh, good. Yeah. And then I got my prize from Fiber Hustle Bingo. I won oh, yeah. bingo, and my winning was a Scrappy Angel bag, which so I love. Cute. This one. Me I think too. your mom has it, right? The larger version. I of think it? so. So she is the first bag maker that I remember seeing doing these wireframe bags where they like, they're kind of like a doctor bag. So it pops open. Like a carpet bag almost. Yeah. Oops. This has two pockets on the inside. So I just, I love the style. I have, we have oh, several. sticker. Right? And mm. because we she's do it with several. Scrappy Angel, she always does one of these angels on the zipper pull. Yeah which is really adorable, which you could take off and use as a progress keeper because yep. it has the little clasp. So that was from my Fiber Hustle Bingo, Pride Bingo win. Awesome. Excuse me. Um, we got a really thoughtful um, package from our friend Lisa, um, who saw these and wanted to, just thought about us and wanted to send them our way. So at um, Hickory Lane Fiber Co., it she found these um, little progress keepers that are mint chocolate chip ice cream cones. <laughs> and I love mint chocolate chip. Yeah. It's my favorite ice cream. And it looks so good. It's my favorite when it's green. I prefer. I know. You prefer the green ones. I don't like white mint chocolate chip ice cream. Yeah. It doesn't give the same feel. Yeah. So Hickory Lane Fiber Co. Yes. So thank you very much, Lisa. Yeah, we'll have that link down below. That's really cool. Yes. Appreciate that very much. Okay. And Next I think is that's... Breaking the Bank. So, guys, all right, so we actually, it's good. We showed some. We showed the... I feel like we should take a break. No, we showed the oh, Jody Long... Yes, Jody Long. ...yarn that we got from Nitty Gritty Yarn Girl Shop. The only other thing I... And we showed our needles that we bought from there. Yeah. We showed the book that we bought, which I'm just going to reference again. This book is Urban Knits. Oh, yeah, thanks for saying that again. So this is 10 Designs for Men. So you have multiple sweaters, right? So uh, uh, five full sweaters, one vest, a cowl, a hat, socks, mitts. This sweater here is beautiful, and this is all knit in Jody Long yarn. Yeah, which is also knitting fever. Also knitting fever. So we saw this. They had several on display. So, you know, we, um, and it was a signed copy so we decided to um, pick this up. I actually picked oh, it up. Should we not have got the same sign? I don't copy? know. It's from August of 2022, so I think it might be okay. We might have taken the wrong one. That might be the store copy. Oh. Happy knitting. Best wishes, Jody Long. And, I and actually the... got this because I really liked the... Well, obviously it has male patterns. Oh, but I, I really hat. liked the hat. Yeah, me too. So the hat is called... Martin. Martin. And I think... Yeah, so this uses the Jody Long Chow base shown in stone. But I just really loved it. Looked um, like a simple cable hat. And I really, I love that sweater. Me too. Maybe one day I would knit that when I have all the time in the world. And I think, actually, if I'm not mistaken, the color I got, snow is used in there. Oh, nice. So yeah, we bought that. And then the only other thing I bought from there was this Juniper Moon 
um, blue face Leicester mm -hmm. wool. It's 100% wool, three and a half ounces, 100 grams, and 202 yards. It says it's a three, which I guess is a DK. Yeah. And like I've seen Juniper Moon before, but I don't know that I've seen this base. Right. So that's why I bought it. It's a nice like golden brownie color, which it's giving me fall vibes. And I think I actually totally have, is. I have to double check the pattern. I think I have a hat in mind for it. So this may get cast on soon. Nice. So that was my nitty gritty yarn girl purchases. And I just got that yarn from there. And the needles. And the needles. Okay, so. That's how we say needles. Let's go to All right. Skeen. So Skeen, I really broke the bank. Yep. He did. I'll go first. Yeah, please do so because we're going to be here for a couple of okay, hours. Okay, no we're not. I'm going to be really, really quick. I saw these on, I, you know how I feel about kits. Um, I bought one. Everybody of, shake your head now with the word kits because you know. I bought one of each. Uh, they had these really, really cute. It's really to teach you how to crochet, but we have five nieces and nephews on my side. We have seven nieces and nephews. Um, so the, I got five of these. I'm thinking Emma might, I don't know. It doesn't matter. I can always get another one. If she, I don't even know if she'd be interested. So um, it really is like learn how to crochet kit. It comes with everything that you need. But I thought the animals were very cute, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna crochet them all. So I got this is called the Woobles Learn to Crochet Kit for Beginners. Um, all materials are included. This is um, Fred the Dinosaur. This one is Pierre the Penguin. Oh my God, they're so cute. This one is Kiki the Chick. This one is Bjorn the Narwhal. Look, it's a narwhal. And last but not least, this is Jojo the Bunny. So I got five of those kits. Um, which is, so just so that everybody, and we'll have this link down below, but it really is intended for you to learn how to do this. So it includes the yarn step-by-step -step video instructions. There's a pre-started piece because a lot of times that initial, especially for Amigurumi, the initial, um, you know, join for, I do a magic ring usually, but they have a pre-started piece already for you. It comes with the crochet hook. Stuffing, plastic eyes, yarn needle, and uh, the online instructions. It says time to complete three to eight hours. Hey, that's not bad. Hmm. So, so that's that. Yeah, we're now going to have five additional four millimeter crochet hooks in the house. So if anybody needs one, just let us know. We can ship one out to you. And I said to Ray, once he bought all these, I was like, like, we have the needle... And the yarn. Look, I'm trying. And the stuffing. <clears throat> and the yarn needle. All at home, I think. But these are cute little kits. And you know, honestly, um, if I had thought more about it, I probably would have done it with Reese. You know, maybe taught her how to crochet. Or, or like bought one and made and had a pattern and make the same one for all of them with the existing. Um, Listen, I don't ever judge your purchases ever, ever. I'm that's not judging. Lie. I'm no, you that's no. judgy. You were very judgy. No, you no, were very judgy. And it, I think you lied. You're sleeping on the couch. I did. I know you did. <laughs> Doing it again. Um, because of his choice. He, it was my choice. I woke get... up at three in the morning, laid in bed for an hour yeah. and decided to get out of bed and yes. went downstairs and laid on the couch and fell asleep. Right. So, um, okay. And that, I only have two more things. Okay. I have three. Well, I have four. Plus one on you, the way. 
I bought those for you. You bought these for well, me. Well, I picked them out. You we, picked them out for me. We, we still pay for them. I know. It's not like you surprised me. So I also was an enabler, which I'm so pleased with. I got Olivia to buy, I think, most of this. <laughs> Stupid. So You can't take us anyway. I do love Hugh Loco. I've never seen Hugh Loco in person, I don't believe. I could be lying. But at a yarn store, I have some. And I've knit with it. Love her colorways. And somebody had asked recently to why we buy yarn from other yarn dyers when I dye my own. Oh. It's because people dye very differently. Yeah. And I have not mastered the speckle by any means. Um, Hugh Loco is very good at it. And colors are different and, you know, bases are different and all of that stuff. So Skein has, they are stockist of Hugh Loco. They had the Backyard Chicken Collection, which is a gorgeous collection. Yeah, it's, it's really, really cute. New every year. So I saw this one and this is the first one I got. This is an 80-20 base. So it's 400 yards, 100 grams, and then you get two minis. Yes. Well, it's just misprinted because it says one is a 100 gram mini skein and that's impossible. Where do you and see that? One 100 gram skein. That's oh, your main skein. Good job. And two 20 gram minis. I just don't read well, guys. So number one, I love both of these colors and I love all of the colors in this skein. I, Olivia bought this one too. We're going to be twinning. I think we have a picture with us. You do. Because she also bought this one, which if I decide to not do socks, yeah, I mean, gotta... these are going to go perfectly together. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, my bad, y'all. This is called Faverol Rooster. Right? Is that what you would say? Faverol? Yeah. Faverol. Faverol. And then this one is Yes, I Canyon. Oh, that's a cute name. I know. And then the other backyard chicken, I, li I got it because of the... Here in yeah, the screen. Yeah, it's really pretty. This is the Ancona rooster. Ooh. So same thing, 100 gram skein, two minis. I just think it's a fantastic collection. I wonder, I don't know the mini colorways. I think the stickers over it. Something pepper and something mint. It could be wrong. Because it looks the same on there. But yeah, so these are the Hugh Loco skeins that I got. They're really good. They all kind of complement each other, to be honest. Yeah, and then Ray picked out and I bought saw these, for me. of course, while I was in line. This is from Wee Ones. Because I saw the slots. I thought they were really cute. Yeah, they're hand-sculpted fiber accessories. Yeah. And Wee Ones is on Etsy. And I got... Uh, these are felted sheep. So I'm going to actually... Aren't they cute? Try to show this sloth. Look at them. And I wanted, oh, so they have them in, so they have them with the clasps or they have the rings. So I wanted the rings. Yes, I find. I prefer the rings. That something like this, I prefer as a stitch marker, not a progress keeper. Yes. Some progress keepers can be quite heavy and yep. pull down your stitch. Yep. So. So I thought these were super cute. There's like little faces in here. You're not going to be able to see, but. Oh, yeah, you kind of We saw eyeballs. They're this so cute. booth at Rhinebeck. Yeah. And I almost bought something there, and I yeah. walked away, I think. But, yeah, they're so, adorable. They are very cute. And I've watched videos of people make, like, little things like this out of the polymer clay. Yeah. They're it's very talented. Completely. It's hypnotic to watch them, it like, really put is. this stuff together. Okay. Next, I saw, um, I saw some people knitting this, um... This sock by Lang Yarns. Um, oh, yeah. Super socks. But, and I've seen that before, but I've never seen with the silk. This has silk in it. It's a silk super wash. So it is. Um, I've never seen Lang, to be honest. 55% wool, 25% nylon, and 20% silk. It feels absolutely incredible. And you can see the stripe pattern there. They're like little stripes, but at the same time, you have bigger stripes, like a fade almost. In be like, do you see that? Yeah, like they're the really pretty, the it's ones that we saw in person. so pretty. This one is called um, Swiss Mountains. It's so, a good colorway. Yeah, and it feels great. So um, I'm really excited to get this 
um, to get this started. Ooh, it smells, it smells shippy. So I got a skein of that to give it a try because somebody was knitting it and it looked really, really fun. Um, and then last but not least, I um, chose uh, another future project. I'm going to knit the, um, oh shoot, what's it called? Church Mouse Yarn. Church Mouse, yeah. Um, the, the poncho. I think it's called like Easy Poncho. Cla is it easier or like Classic Poncho? I think it's an, I don't know. It's an easy, it's a poncho from Church Mouse Yarns. I knit one already. Are you looking it up? Yeah. Great. Thank you. And, um, oops, I kicked the camera. And they had, now Kevin's knit with this yarn before. I just chose a different color. This is the um, Yak, oh gosh, what the heck's the actual name of it? Lang? Is this Lang? Yep. What is this? It doesn't say on the label, which is really weird. Weird. It's a Lang uh, Yak. It's a 50%, no, 70% um, extra fine merino and 30% Yak. And I got the color, I don't know, nine seven uh, one one zero three dot zero 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 three, which is an excellent color. I highly recommend. Um, but it's a really pretty gray color. It's the softest, softest yarn. And I thought that this would make a really nice poncho. I I knit that for a friend of mine. And I was kind of jealous when I took my... You can just go to my Ravelry page. It's literally right there. It's Easy Folded Poncho. Easy Folded Poncho. Um, so I had knit one for a friend of mine. And uh, when I took the finished object photos, I really liked how it looked on me. And, and I could totally get behind a poncho. And it actually has two options. It has like a, a yep. folded neck, kind of, or no collar yeah nothing or a cowl so neck, here yeah a cowl neck so yeah. here's uh the two different versions of it shown one with a cowl neck and one without yeah so i got enough uh enough yarn to do that poncho and i'm i'm really excited about that and i don't need to wind the yarn up it's all ready and, good and it's to go. beautiful and it's yarn gorgeous i have it right super here. super soft um yeah so i have the lang yak in 1103.0011 and it was. It's beautiful. I did a yeah. Lyle cap out of it because it's a DK weight. Yes. Thank you for saying that's a DK weight. I learned it. Yes. Okay. And that is all of that. So now we just have reading and watching. Wow. Okay. So I'm going to... Uh, I can go first because I have a uh, very uh, brief. So I am still listening to White Trash... No. Uh, yeah. White Trash Warlock. Um... I'm not 100% into Your bird it, but I am quite, I'm getting close, man. My bird is definitely wanting some attention. Um, My belly wants attention. I'm starving. I am too. What are we going to do? We have food in the fridge. We're not cheating. Okay. Whatever. Um, I, I'm, I'm not 100% into it. It's an entertaining book, but... Um, it doesn't, it's not capturing my attention. I probably won't read the other ones or listen to the other ones. But I'm currently reading The Princess of Potential um, by Delemhak. It's one, one word. It's the author that wrote the House Witch series, which I absolutely love. This takes place 20 years after, but it keeps the, with, the same, um, with the same characters. That is the book. I am listen, uh, reading this on Kindle. It is so good. I forgot how much um, how much I love that that series, The House Witch, and it makes me feel all those wonderful feelings. I did finish The Captain by Will White, which is book one in the Horizon series or the Last Horizon series. I thought it was really good. I can't wait for the second one to come out. Um, you're, j I just, towards the end, just started getting invested in the characters, took some time, but I was, but I got there in the end. And so now I can't wait for the second one to come out, which should be out in a few months, I think. Okay. Yeah. And that's it. All right. So I have finished two books. The first book is Wayward by yep. Mary Combs. And that was a male, male romance. It was a, it was okay. 
the main character was part family was like a mob family in Chicago, so he's part of it. Like his dad's second, like right hand dude. Yeah. Um, and some stuff happened, and he went into Wit Sec, so witness protection, in the Pacific Northwest, and then just like a Hallmark movie, all the good stuff happened. So it was enjoyable. It took a little bit to to get to him leaving Chicago. It actually took like a good chunk of the book. So I felt like once he got to the Pacific Northwest, it was rushed. Yeah. Um, there wasn't a lot of stuff like really fleshed out. The One of the characters in it, she is this older woman who comes from Spurred. family with money. And she reminded me of, what's her name from Great Expectations? Miss Havisham. Yeah, her in like her house. She's... She's a character. I kind of wish this one was a series and you got to see a little bit more of the characters in oh, it. He's dancing around. Next up, I finished a book called Wicked Games by M.J. Scott. This is an urban fantasy. It takes place in San Francisco in the future, like way future. Um, the entire world was kind of ravaged by earthquakes. Mm -hmm. So, and they're... The technology is much different there. Uh, the main character, Maggie, owns her own company called Tech Witch. She's just kind of like a wizard with technology and finding issues for companies who have a problem with their systems, like the coding and stuff. But she gets hired by a company to help them. And it's a very large gaming company and they can't figure out what's happening with a game that is currently being tested and it's having an impact the newest iteration of it or version of it um like i think it's version two um the testers have like been having some emotional impact or like they're just off afterwards so she's been brought in and during the testing um she gets this chip put in her arm which allows you to connect to like virtual realities things. It's very interesting, actually. I think it'd be kind of cool. But whatever. Um, she, her mother was a witch. She is not a witch. Or so she see, thinks. And this process brings out a demon who's been chasing her, who's chasing her. And it's kind of like the progression of that. And now I'm reading book two, which is called Wicked Words which takes place nine months after the first book mm. in the series. And there's currently five books, but the next book does book five doesn't come out to like 2024 at some point, which is ridiculous that I just said 2024 know. for a book release. But so it's okay. I like Maggie there. Um, her romantic interest. He's kind of cool too. He seems nice, but I'm not too sure. We'll have to figure more out about him, but I'm hoping that there's a little more background on magic in here because it wasn't, not a lot of time was spent on magic in the first book. And lastly, we have been watching a ton. A lot. A lot. A lot. So, Heartstopper season two. Two thumbs up. Love Chef's it. Chef's kiss. Phenomenal. Red, white, and royal blue, I thought was quite good. Same. Um, they made some changes to the books. Some characters are missing. I kind of get it. In a weird way, mm -hmm. but I think that they captured the essence of the book quite Me too. well. I'm not mad at it at all. No. I, I would recommend reading the book. I think the book, obviously the book is, yes. you know, I, I like books better, I think. But they did a good job, I think, capturing the essence, just like you said. Of They're their two different things, you know, the book and the movie, but it has the same vibe. Yes. There's actually a rumor that there is an extended, like a director's cut. Don't oh. know if it will ever be released, but it's about three hours and contains oh. a lot more. Yeah. We, Let's hope for that. I know. And the author of the book said that there may be a sequel to the book. So who knows? We also started watching C on Apple TV Plus Season 2. C-S-E-E. -E. Yes. With Jason Momoa. Um, He's excellent in he, this. Yeah. And David Batista and a couple other people that I can't think of. Yeah. Alfred Woodard? Alfred? I don't know how you know these people. Because um, I I'm I am I know you are IMDb. So that's quite good. I think we're almost done with season two. It's very um, like uh, violent. 
It is very violent. It's very violent. So trigger warning there. There's a lot of violence. There is. We also watched rewatch. The next two are rewatches for us. So we rewatched the most recent Star Trek movie with Christopher Pine because we had been watching the Mm -hmm. TV show. So we were in like a Star Trek-y mood. And I just love... I thought the casting of those movies was fantastic. Really, really good. Agreed. Um, Oh, speaking of Christopher Pine, we also watched Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, yeah, we did. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It was entertaining. It wasn't super cheesy. Like, it had him, Michelle Rodriguez in it. Um... Hugh Grant. Yeah. It wasn't really for me. Oh, really? No. I liked it. Um, and then we watched Under the Tuscan Sun, which I oh, just love. it's loved. such a good movie. It's such a... I probably watch it at least once a year. I love it. It's yeah. a feel-good movie. It totally is. I love the it message makes you want to, like, go there. Go to Italy. Yeah. I Well, I now want to buy... A, I want to open a yarn store, so there's that. Move to Italy. And then I also want to move to Vermont. Oh. Um I've always wanted to live, like, Vermont, New Hampshire area. Yeah. We have. My family did as kids. But that's here, there. Um, and we so we watched Dungeons & Dragons Under the Tuscan Sun. And then I watched an interesting documentary. I'm going to see if I can find the name of it on Amazon Prime. Um, I, as, if you've been around for a while, you guys know I like watching basketball. NBA, WNBA, men and women's college basketball. And there was a documentary... I don't have Amazon Prime on my phone. Uh, whatever. Hold on. What is this? Is this a TV show based on a Harlan Corbin book? It looks like it. Yeah, called Shelter. I'll have to look at that. But this documentary followed some players in the NBA's G League and like their the path that they're taking to actually play in the NBA. Mm-hmm. So I just thought it was really interesting. It was about two hours. I watched it. it. took me about six hours to watch it because I was doing it like while I was dying yarn and waiting for stuff to cook. But I would highly recommend it. I thought it was good if you're a fan of basketball. It was interesting. And I believe, y'all, I think that is everything. Oof. I'm beat. Me too. I'm beat and I'm hungry. Mm-hmm. And we have sense. a bird that's going bananas. Yes, downstairs. So, if you've stuck around, thank you very much. Really, thank you from the bottom of our hearts, because... It was, was a lot I today. barely st- stuck around. I'm just kidding. I know, right? Um, again, shop update will be this Monday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yep. And we have the two cows going along, the Hohe Summer, and the Let's Hear It for the Boys... And I think that's it. Yeah. And we check will check out those coupon codes. Did you say that? Yeah, check out the coupon codes below. And um, we will see you all in two weeks. Bye. Or fortnight. In a fortnight. Yeah. Hope Do you that guys. Again. So I hope you guys have a great two weeks. And we will see you in a fortnight. Woohoo. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye bye.